Hello, uh, Nikolai. This is some fantastic work here. Uh, my name is Keith Sinte. I am a uh, character animator currently working at Industrial Light and Magic in San Francisco. And uh, I've worked on, for the past 20 years, I've been a professional character animator. I was started out as a traditional animator at Disney and then DreamWorks. So I've worked on uh, and moving into visual effects at Sony and Digital Domain, and now, like I said, I'm at Industrial Light and Magic. I've worked on the past several uh, Transformers movies, Tron. Started out, like I said, as a traditional animator, working on movies like Pocahontas, Mulan, Tarzan, and at DreamWorks. Uh, DreamWorks, I worked on uh, the movie Spirit. I love drawing the horses. I'm a big animal lover. Um, and then uh, into Sinbad, and then eventually made the transition into computer animation, CG animation, with uh, Open Season and Surf's Up, and then eventually into visual effects movies, worked on Amazing Spider-Man, um, just uh, a whole host of movies. I've had a tremendous tremendous time, um, and I, I love what I do, and it's great to be able to also mentor people like yourself and, and see this kind of talent. I think your shot looks looks really great. I mean, I was studying it, and it looks like you're really influenced by traditional animation because of some of the posing you have in here. Before we take a look at the whole thing, you have, well, actually, maybe we should look at it first this way. Um, by the way, if you're interested and you'd like to see what I've been up to, you can see my reel. Either Google my name, Keith Sente, Vimeo, and you can see my reels there, or my website is KeithSente.com. All right, let's take a look at this first, then we'll kind of break it down. But like I said, it's, it's tremendous work. Hey, Bill. Everything going adequately? Very adequately, sir. I'm virtually bursting with that aquatulence. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that aquatulence means, but I'm going to have to look it up after this. So stuff like this is definitely along the lines. We have the elongated hands. All of this posing is, is really fun. I mean, and you, you, you definitely knew enough when you're doing these type of exaggerated, elongated, stretched drawings to keep them along their arc, which is the important thing. I mean, even this one, you have a reverse arc on that hand. You can see this beautiful arc happening through here being described by that stretch drawing. You do have some motion blur in here, which, you know, the reason that a lot of times we do, well, it, it, we had to do it in traditional animation where you would stretch or elongate or do multiple arms on a drawing was because you were you didn't have motion blur with traditional animation. So this was to take the place of motion blur to allow you to do a very fast motion when you don't have enough frames to, to you know, sell the, uh, the image with nice in-betweens. And since you're doing it from one frame and it's going to the next really fast and we don't have motion blur, we were forced to do things like this with these elongated hands. And I think it's fun to see it in CG, especially because you, you tone down the motion blur enough that this is still effectual. A lot of times, if you bury it in motion blur, you don't even see it. I did this, some shots of in, in a movie called Shark Tale with the worm that was going about to be eaten by a shark. And I think it was in the beginning of the movie. He's on a hook, and he's whipping his head back and forth. And um, in those, I did the same thing you're doing here, where I would stretch and elongate the head as it zipped back and forth. And a lot of that, though, got buried in the in motion blur, but you can still read it. But anyway, stuff like this is really fun, and then this bit where he flies forward. Let's watch it real speed again. For those of you that haven't seen this, and might be watching. I'm virtually bursting. So that virtually bursting, if you go frame by frame through here, and a movie like Aladdin, that's a great one to look at this kind of stuff. But watch, watch what uh, Nikolai did here. The head goes <laughs> completely back pops forward, and you did a, a good thing here by, again, kind of carving the arc out by using the skull itself. And notice, for those of you that are tuning in, he's only doing this on one frame, one frame, and then he's almost back to the normal. You can't keep those type of images for more than one or two frames because we'll see them. This is something you want to feel more than see. So this possibly could have taken this and made it more of this type of shape to help in between from here to here. You could have 
exaggerated this maybe a little bit more, but it plays really nicely. Let's take a look at that again, real speed. Very adequately, sir. I'm virtually bursting with that. So fast, we don't even see it. We just feel it, and that's perfect. Quetulance. Okay, you're posing, you're staging, everything seems really clear. There's a few little notes here that I'm just going to give you to touch on. Um, you're from uh, Armenia, it says, and um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with, with English. You did a really great job creating the mouth shapes, and these are things that I would tell somebody that grew up speaking English in an you know, English-speaking country like America. I would give these exact same notes. So I don't think it has anything to do with with anything coming from any different countries, but they're little minor things in the mouth shapes that you might want to consider. Before I get to those, I'm just going to talk about this arm right here and how we lose its silhouette behind the hands. If there was a way that you could help keep this elbow out, possibly by using the elbow twist, maybe we get it out here. Um, just the way it tucks back behind here. Just it's kind of a little bit of a, a, a um, weird silhouette. Hey, Bill. Right here. Especially because you hold this pose for so long. One thing you're doing throughout your animation, which is very, it's, this is a very stylized bit of animation. It's something like they did in uh, Hotel Transylvania, where you're hitting a pose, and you freeze everything, and then you kind of see how this doesn't even move. Now, ordinarily, it's hard to get away with that. You did a really nice job of keeping things alive just enough, and you held things just enough, and then you go into your next pose, and it's, and it's consistent throughout the piece, so it's a, it's a style. And in Hotel Transylvania, they did a similar thing, where they would hold a pose. And the weird thing is, is in CG, as opposed to traditional animation, if you held a drawing in traditional animation, because it's hand-drawn, I don't know, there's some reason, there's some magical effect that would happen where you could get away with holding a drawing or two um, for some frames. In CG, it usually kills everything and you want to avoid it because it will instantly go dead because things are move a little bit more realistically in between wise in computer animation and the fact that it's uh, something that looks like a 3D object there's a weird effect that happens normally when you lock and freeze a pose but when you're doing it consistently throughout the piece and you're doing it just right which you've actually managed to uh, handle very well um, it works Hey, Bill. Everything going adequately? Very I mean, here. He flops up. The arms, his arms keep going. But the body is like a solid object that doesn't move. Watch when, when your character comes up here. I mean, you know about this. I'm kind of speaking to the general audience as well. Very adequately, sir. I'm virtually... <laughs> he did it so brilliantly. The way his body, sto you know, his body stops, arms flop, and then he goes right into the next thing. So that's really difficult to make look good. Um, all right, so we talked about this elbow here. Uh, eye direction looks great. I'm not sure about eyelids. It's difficult to tell because of the way this was rendered, but I think just make sure that we see a sliver of the eyelids throughout so it doesn't look like Muppets with no eyelids. So it's just not appealing. By the way, this is a great effect, the lens distortion on the glasses. It's brilliant. A lot of great stuff about this. So something like this. Just make sure there's a sliver. And maybe it's because we don't have um, eyelashes in there. So maybe there, maybe you do see a sliver of eyelid. Just want to double check with you on that. Um, I wasn't sure about your acting choice. Adequately, sir. When he says sir with this, the arm does a weird woo woo woo, like a wavy effect. Wow, look at my motion blur. Um, your arc, you know, the way this arc kind of travels and then kind of, it, it's not a great arc and then it kind of pops up here. Very adequately, sir. I think just, I think just smoothing that arc would help. You know, going, tracking this. And make sure that, I think, Possibly going from here, maybe here. I 
and then starting to bring it up into your like this would help to smooth that out. Adequately, sir. We'll say it's this bit here coming up that belays the belies the problem. So I mean you kind of you're coming up and then it kind of hits a corner and then starts to head over straight. It's you know it's kind of this corner here. I think that's really catching my eye with that. Adequately. Very adequately, sir. I'm virtually bursting with that aquatulent. Um, I wasn't. I thought that this hip. You have some hip things that are happening. The last one is good. Resettles. I think this one is is okay. But the first one here might be a little bit too hippy. Very adequately, sir. I'm virtually bur that that one. I'm sorry. It's right here. You go from this to this. It's kind of a uh, something I would expect to see on a female. That sort of. I'm virtually. You know what I mean? Some of these doing this like Hawaiian woo -woo, hip hip thing. So rather than rather than that. This little hip swing probably don't have this one so severe. And probably the other one not so severe. It may be just toning it down that'll help. It's just it's really exaggerated and it just looks like a female feminine sort of Quickly, sir. I'm virtually <sighs> like you swing it like a bell. Um, all right. So the last thing I'm just going to talk about a few mouth shapes here. Hey Bill, everything going? All right. Hey Bill, uh, open the mouth to jaw bigger on the on the, the syllable for Bill. Hey Bill, so this this would be wider. Open for your eye and Bill. Now make that that shape bigger. Bill, and when he ends the L, it should be more of a an ooh, like a bill. So you'd want to bring the corners of the mouth in slightly, and the tongue up. It'd be nice to see that tongue in there hitting that bill. The tongue goes up. Everything going? Hey, Bill. Everything going? Hey, Bill. Just back this up a little bit here. Bill, everything going at oh, Everything going. And then, and then your E going from Bill to everything. I think that that E. Bill, everything going. Such a password. Bill everything. Hey, Bill everything. Bill everything. Bill everything. Your your L. Bill, everything. You wouldn't close the mouth as much either on that L. So keep it open bigger so it's Bill everything, and you're kind of just bouncing right down into that E for the word everything. Going adequately? Very adequately. Uh, your V isn't reading too much in the word very. I think you can exaggerate that V for very. Adequately. Very adequately. So that would be very. It would be. It's coming up. So probably show the teeth a little bit, curl the lower lip underneath the teeth, and then translate the jaw forward. So it would be like a. That, and then you're going to pop that jaw open on very. Very adequate. I'm seeing the E. It's just the V. And also, I think you could stand to get your V as soon as you can. So maybe around here, we're starting to see that shape better. Very adequately, sir. All right. Your R in sir. Very adequately, sir. You need a better R shape, and that's kind of bringing the upper lid, upper lip, air, uh, these edges here down. So, in other words, your upper lip would have a slight shape to this. These bits kind of get pushed down a little bit.
very <laughs> um, bring the corners of the mouth in more than you have here. So push those in. I'm virtually bursting with. I'm virtually bursting. You're, I'm virtually bursting that R again. I know he's in the move here. The B is great. Er, er. Here's a good R. Let's keep it here. Kind of favorite into your S. This is good. I'm virtually bursting. Yeah, we need to hit that R as you come up out of this. So this would be your R. R, sort of R into the S, S. Really bursting with that aquatulence. Aquatulence. Bursting with that aquatulence. Great. Um, the other, the last thing now is going to be this. Um, okay, at the end here, um, you hold this last pose for 15 frames where nothing happens except the smoke. This is where it doesn't work. Uh, don't go out on a held cell, held frame it, and in any test. Um, it just looks weird. You got a jostle here. Watch the elbow. It's like a weird frame. Anyway, just have them continuously moving somehow, even if it's a, a held um, a moving hold, rather, at the end here. I guess settle. I'm going to have him hit this pose at frame, I don't know, 20, 229 or something, and then settle back. So you have him, here he goes forward. He hits it, bang, and then settle. Let's settle. So, boom, hits it, and then settle. And you do your settle all the way out, and don't freeze him at the end. Hey, Bill. Everything going adequately? Very adequately. Uh, this little finger shake thing, just one last note, is terrific. Adequately? Very adequately, sir. I yeah. So, I mean, just minor stuff on the on the uh, lip sync. Tiny little thing with the hips. Um, but this is really a great piece of work. So, congratulations on winning and, and uh, good luck in your future. Okay? All right. Take care now.